You wanna know what it takes to buy a house in 2023? Well, here's the video that you've been waiting for. Make sure you stay to the very end. I've got five tips and strategies of what it's gonna to take to be successful, to become a homeowner. And if this is the first time you're checking out my channel, my name is Sean Oihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, and I'm helping you finance your homes all across the country. Whether you're a first time home buyer or a seasoned investor, I created this channel to help you be successful and understand the home ownership process. There's so much talk about what's gonna go down in 2023. So many experts are starting to put out their opinions and forecasts of what's gonna happen to the real estate market. But with all the noise that's out there, I'm giving you five tips and strategies of what you should start thinking about today if buying a house at any point next year is on your radar. First and foremost, you need to talk to a local real estate agent. So many of these publications and news media outlets are putting out their forecast, but a lot of it is a national forecast. They're predicting the entire market, what's gonna happen to rates and housing prices and everything else that can go along with it. But you have to look at your specific real estate market. And the reason why I say that is because if you really dig into some of this data, there's a handful of states that may decline in value and there's actually a handful of states that are predicted to increase in value. So when you look at a national headline, that may not even apply to your specific market. So the first thing that you need to do if buying a house is on your radar is call a local real estate agent and make sure that they are in the business, not someone who does it part time or someone that does it as a hobby. You wanna make sure that whoever you're working with understands the market and can interpret data because let's just say in your market, they're anticipating values to come down maybe another five or 10%. You wanna know that if you're buying a house. But what if you're in a market where things are gonna be hot and heavy? You wanna know that too, because you may have to move sooner before things get even more expensive for you out there. So you wanna take into account all the local data as much as possible. And the second thing you wanna do is think about your plan. Do you plan on being in the home a year, two years, or is it a five, 10 year plan? And this is something I don't think many buyers really take into account when they buy because they get so emotional and so excited about the process, you're not thinking of what the long-term plan is. And the reason why I say that's something important that you should think about, let's just say you move to a new city and you're there for work and you're on an assignment maybe for two years. Now, if you bought a house and if the market, let's just say in that specific city doesn't recover in two years, you might be stuck with a property that you may not be able to sell. You could either short sell it or maybe turn it into a rental. But what if you do not, I mean, do not wanna be a landlord and that's not even an option. So then do you short sell the house and then ruin your credit? So I think you have to take into account what are your specific goals? How long do you plan to stay in that city? How long do you plan on staying in that house? And I think the decision to buy needs to be based on that timeline because if Let's just say the market comes down another 10%, 20%, 30%. And if you need to sell and move within that time frame, can you get out of that? Do you have more money to get out of the deal or will you be stuck? And number three, what you wanna do is get pre-qualified. We harp on this all the time. That's the first thing you need to do when you think about buying a house. Now more than ever, with interest rates the way they are, even though we predict them to come back down at some point, you wanna understand what's the best loan option for you not necessarily what the lowest interest rate is. And I know some of you will argue with me and say, well, the lowest rate's always the best deal. I'd argue back and say it's not always the best deal because any mortgage lender out there can give you the lowest rate, they'll charge you an arm and a leg for it. And more often than not, they'll never disclose that to you. I just had a client reach out to me about a refinance that the lender was charging him over $20,000 in fees. He reached out to us and maybe he might be watching this video and he wanted me to take a look at it. But looking at options like that is really important because you might get so fixated on the lowest interest rate, you might not be looking at the rest of the loan estimate and the lender could pull one over on you. And that's the last thing you'd wanna do. So make sure when you get qualified, look for options. Your loan officer should be giving you two to four options when you qualify to purchase your home. If they can't do that, you might wanna find somebody else and get a second opinion. And if you're still watching this video, make sure to comment below pre-qual so I know that you're still watching and you enjoy this information that I'm giving you. And if you find it helpful, share this with a friend or a family member because we want people to become homeowners but do it without the mistakes and the headaches involved. So I appreciate the love and you sharing this video with your friends and family. And number four, you wanna create a budget. This is something that I've been talking about more and more in my videos lately only because of where the market's at. 
interest rates are higher than what we're all accustomed to and you don't want to overpay for a house or be house poor and you can't afford your housing payment. Now, some of you are picking up side jobs and side hustles to try to make some extra income as we deal with this record high inflation. If you try to pick up a second job, remember, a lender is going to have to see a two year history of you having that second job in order to qualify you with that income. So again, this also ties back to my earlier point, get pre-approved, talk to a lender, even if they don't pull your credit. If you just have some general questions, any loan officer out there should be willing to answer those questions and walk you through the process. Of course, they want to get your business in the future, but if they're giving you the right guidance and the right steps in order to be successful, why not give them a shot? So creating a budget is super important. Don't skip over that step because you'd be surprised at how much money you're probably throwing away right now that you could put into a savings account or into an interest bearing account and at least it accrues some type of money versus you throwing it away or leaving it on your credit card. And number five, what you wanna do is negotiate. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. This is something that so many people threw out the window the last couple of years simply because it was a seller's market and the sellers dictated the entire process. You didn't even have the opportunity to negotiate and most real estate agents that were inexperienced, they just wrote a blind offer and they hoped and prayed that maybe it got accepted and they could get a commission check. But with the way that the market's heading, and you're starting to see some corrections and some pullbacks in values, not necessarily a crash. If you're afraid of the market doing that, price that into your offer. Let's just say you wanna buy a house for $500,000 and you think the market's gonna pull back another 5%. Take that 5% or the 25,000 off the top of the house or maybe use that to cover your closing costs or buy down your interest rate. So you can come in around the 475 range. You don't have to give the seller what they're asking for, especially in this market. So this is where again, back to my first point, having a good real estate agent that knows the market, that knows how to negotiate is going to be key to you buying your first home. Now, if you don't know where to even start, you can click the link below. There's a link to my home buyer guide that will walk you through the entire process from start to finish. It's free for you to read through. And if you have any specific questions, you can always send me an email. I'd be happy to chat with you offline. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.